Takuyasu arteritis, or TAC for short, is a large vessel vasculitis which causes narrowing or stenosis of the big arteries of the aortic arch. It classically affects young Asian women and manifests with high blood pressure, my acronym for hypertension, bruies, and upper limb pulselessness. Pathophysiologically, vessels are most affected at their roots and all layers of the artery are involved, making TAC a panarteritis. The tunica intima, which is the innermost layer, shows marked proliferation and fibrosis. This causes narrowing of the lumen and can result in arterial stenosis, leading to downstream arterial insufficiency. The immunopathogenic mechanism of this disease is poorly understood, However, we do know that tissue infiltrates mostly consist of lymphocytes, especially gamma-delta T cells. Clinically, both generalized and vascular features occur. Constitutional signs and symptoms like malaise, fevers, weight loss, and night sweats are common. Vascular features include the triad of high blood pressure manifestations. Hypertension occurs in most patients due to narrowing and decreased elasticity of the aorta and its branches or the renal arteries. Severe malignant hypertension can occur. Notably, you might find discrepant blood pressure of greater than or equal to 10 millimeters of mercury between arms due to arterial stenosis. Bruies are usually audible over the brachial, carotid, and abdominal vessels. Stenosis causes high-velocity, turbulent blood flow. This causes vibrations in the arteries that can be heard in the form of a low-pitched whooshing sound, aka a bruit. Pulselessness or weak pulses is most common in the radial arteries and is often asymmetric. This is due to insufficient flow from upstream stenosis. To investigate Takuyasu arteritis, consider blood tests and imaging after thorough history and exam. Bloods might show elevated inflammatory markers like CRP and ESR. Organ-specific biomarkers like EUCs and liver biochemistry might reveal damage from reduced perfusion. Importantly, there are no diagnostic blood tests for TAC and patients are usually anchor negative. Complete imaging of the aorta and its branches is essential. This might involve MRI and or PET scans. Angiography has a characteristic pattern of irregular vessel walls, stenosis, and post dilation in the form of aneurysms. The management of TAC involves inducing and maintaining remission, managing hypertension, and vascular surgery. Intensive induction often requires pulse methylprednisolone to induce remission. This is followed by maintenance therapy, often with corticosteroid sparing agents that act as immunomodulators like azathioprine, methotrexate, and tocilizumab. Hypertension needs to be managed carefully because severe or even malignant hypertension can occur. Often it's a sign that surgery might be indicated. Vascular intervention may be necessary for the treatment of aneurysms or stenosed arteries leading to organ ischemia. However, procedures like percutaneous transluminal angioplasty and stent graft placement should be avoided during the active phase of the disease. Let's summarize with our mnemonic. I think that high blood pressure is always in the way. This reminds me of its features like hypertension, bruies, and upper limb pulselessness, and its demographics women that are ethnically Asian and young. Thanks for watching Tanzan Teaching.